The story takes place during World War II, an era of modern weapons science. The Germania Empire expanded its power to invade neighboring countries, including Princess Finney's small country of Eilstadt. However, a miracle appeared and changed the outcome of the World War. The story begins with a girl named Finey jogging in the forest with her small pet, but she is attracted by small lights floating in the air. They ran in one direction, and she kept chasing, and then she saw them gathering at a point next to a red-haired girl. But then the call woke her up. It turns out that Finey is the princess of Eilstadt. She is secretly on a mission with two bodyguards, but World War II is about to break out. In this neutral country, she was also captured by Germania soldiers. All three people planned to leave quietly when they were discovered by soldiers. They ran for their lives to the back of the train. Colonel Belkman sent someone out to see the situation. He also does not want soldiers to cause noise in this country. They guessed that the princess's purpose was to come here to find allies when war was about to break out. Finey and two bodyguards climbed to the roof of the train with difficulty and had to confront their pursuers. Then she jumped into a storage room and was caught by a locked chest. She was trying to take it off when Colonel Belkman arrived. One of her bodyguards was shot and injured. When the train entered the dark tunnel, Finey and her bodyguards found a way to escape. They opened the door and jumped straight into the river as the train exited the tunnel. But that guard's injury was so severe that he could not survive. The princess was extremely heartbroken, but the task was still ahead, she could not be discouraged. The world war gradually spread to Europe, and the princess's small country of Eilstadt could not escape the war. That's why she had to be in this country to urge her allies. Now she and the remaining bodyguards stopped to rest at an inn. She just showered and encouraged herself, but the guards panicked and misunderstood that something had happened to her. They then went to the rendezvous point at the Opera House to meet Lord Redford of Britannian. A tentative conversation took place between the two. It seems Lord Redford does not want to suffer losses for a small country like Eilstadt. Finey tried to persuade, but it was ineffective. She had to agree to their prince's proposal, even though she had refused before. This statement surprised him. Suddenly, someone brought a secret message to Lord Redford, causing him to immediately refuse Finey's proposal because the Germania Empire has just launched an attack across the Eilstadt border. Combat helicopters, bombs, and tanks are attacking. The Eilstadt soldiers could only resist in vain. At this time, the princess's remaining bodyguard could not escape death. Germania's soldiers stormed in and captured Finai. Lord Redford said he had nothing to do with it, but believe it or not that makes no difference. They then escorted her onto a plane to take her to the Empire, along with a trunk containing something secret. When the plane flew over the Eilstadt border, Finey couldn't keep calm when she learned about the situation in her hometown. They wanted to take her as a hostage to force the Eilstadt royal family and the people to surrender unconditionally. But suddenly, the plane became disoriented by unidentified lights and plummeted downward. Finey took the opportunity to push a soldier down and steal his gun. But before she could do anything, she was shot. However, she still stood tall and refused to bow her head. She has accepted the worst for herself, but it's all for the sake of the country and its people. Finey opened her arms and spoke her last words as Princess of Eilstadt. Her voice woke up the girl in her chest. She is the witch, Izetta. Izetta recognizes Princess Finey, who once stood up for her when she was young. Izetta saw that the princess was injured. She became angry and emitted a terrible power, causing the soldiers to fly away and the plane to crumble. Izetta rode on a long gun instead of a broom, flying over to catch the princess. They finally met again after more than 10 years. Nearby reconnaissance planes received news that the shipment was in trouble and chased the signal. At this time, Izetta was still happily hugging the princess without paying attention to the wound on her arm. When she discovered it, the princess wanted her to cross the nearby mountain range to find a garrison in Eilstadt. Izetta saw the symbol of the Germania Empire and immediately remembered the bloody scene in her village. She was forced to use witch powers, going against her grandmother's instructions. Izetta accelerated the rifle. They flew away so fast that even the Empire's scouts had difficulty chasing them. They could no longer wait for the captain's orders and attacked the two girls. This made Izetta even more angry. She used her blood and dripped it into the snow. The white snow turned into ice spears that pierced an enemy plane. When the two crossed the mountain range, Izetta's strength had just run out. But there is still an enemy who is still pursuing them. The princess tells Izetta to aim the gun barrel at the enemy while she prepares to shoot. The bullet hit the plane's engine, causing the guy to make an emergency landing. Izetta and the princess landed in the forest on the other side of the mountains. Izetta then carried the princess on her back and tried to find the nearest Eilstadt station. At this time, in the Eilstadt Palace, the king fell seriously ill. 
His country is under imperialist attack. The princess is missing, making the king extremely desperate. He could only look at the White Witch painting. Hopefully, a miracle will appear to save this country. Meanwhile, Eilstadt's army on the border was retreating, but they had to take a deter through the forest to get back to the capital. Suddenly, Major Hans discovered Izetta carrying the princess on her back. He immediately took the princess to the nearest barracks for treatment. Izetta always stayed close to the princess because she was worried about her. In addition to the wound on her arm, there was also an old wound on her ribs. Izetta looked at Finey lying there and remembered the first time they met. At that time, Izetta was getting used to her power and didn't notice when Finey was there. That is also the first scene of the story that Finey has always dreamed of. Finey feels that Izetta is a kind person. She doesn't care about her status as a princess to befriend her. Before meeting the princess, Izetta lived with her grandmother, who had to leave the village after the Imperial Army massacred the witch village. She always told Izetta not to use her strength in front of others because it would bring disaster to her. The princess is fine now. The doctor also did not forget to take care of Izetta's wound. She was so busy worrying about the princess that she didn't feel like she was in so much pain. That night, Hans visited the princess and Izetta and saw that Finey was awake. The next day, everyone quickly marched to return to the capital on time. On the way, they stopped at a ruined mansion to rest. According to the situation, Major Hans reported that the enemy was approaching the capital. If they returned later, they wouldn't have time to reunite and would be attacked separately by the enemy. Finey called Izetta, she wanted her friend to leave to avoid being caught up in this senseless war. She doesn't want Izetta to violate the witch taboo anymore. These things made Izetta very sad but she wanted to ask for a request. Izetta wants herself to be able to protect what the princess loves most. Meanwhile, at the last defensive fortress in the capital, everyone was careful to maintain their position because even the slightest negligence could result in the enemy being able to surprise them. The colonel saw a young soldier trembling nervously, so he gave him a sip of wine to calm him down. He warned him that if he was stressed all the time, when something happened, he would become stupid and unable to do anything. Seeing how optimistic he was, the young man knew that this fortress would not last long if the enemy concentrated their strength to attack them. Suddenly, a vehicle transmitted the news that the front line had fallen, and the colonel ordered people to destroy the road with bombs. At this time, Imperial bombers arrived, and they bombed the entire ancient fortress area. The boy was stunned without any resistance due to fear. The colonel immediately rushed out and pulled this stupid kid down to hide from the bomb. When the bombardment ended, Jonas crawled up and saw the colonel dying to save him. Everyone quickly evacuated people from the occupied wax area. Germania felt that bombing was not enough, so they sent a few more armored tanks to crush the fortress. Layer after layer of defense was broken, and many people continued to sacrifice. Returning to Princess Fiany, after receiving news that the capital's last defensive fortress was violently attacked, she and the soldiers observed from afar. Then the Imperial Army fiercely bombarded the Eilstadt Fortress. At this time, a series of planes came to bomb, but suddenly a red-haired girl wearing an Eilstadt military uniform rode on a Roman-era spearman flying in the air and attacked the Germania Empire's warplanes. She destroyed an entire air force, not allowing them to bomb or crash into the suicide fortress. Then, with a bit of carelessness, she stuck her head into the bushes and fell towards the Eilstadt soldiers. There was no time to explain to them anymore. She borrowed the gun and flew towards the fortress to gather all the ancient swords, then rushed forward and overturned the armored tank, penetrating the enemy's defenses. Princess Finey also received news that Izetta was going into battle, so she asked the Major to send a message of light to the Eilstadt soldiers to join forces with the White Witch's descendants to defeat the enemy and protect the capital. After many hours of fighting, Izetta also helped the Eilstadt soldiers defeat the Germanian Imperial Army. The king learned that his daughter was safe and even won an important battle with the White Witch's descendants. He also breathed his last. Princess Finey's coronation ceremony was held right at Eilstadt's ancient castle in front of thousands of international journalists. After ascending the throne, the princess announced the king's death so that everyone would believe in her, with the support of the White Witch Izetta. Next was Izetta's performance, where she rode on a rifle and flew around with the holy sword. Then she carried Finey and floated in the air. The news reached the king of Germania like a rocket. He was extremely interested in the little witch, who had almost belonged to him but had lost her in Eilstadt. Then there was news that Izetta single-handedly raided and took back territory occupied by the Empire. He believed in the power of witches, and then his desire to have it grew even more. This time, he gave Colonel Belkman full authority to use military power to capture Izetta for the Empire. That night, Belkman met someone who was the only survivor during the pursuit of Finey, 
and Izetta. He was confident that if he saw her again, he would catch her. Thus, he was assigned the task of hunting the White Witch. Meanwhile, in Eilstadt, everything was going according to the princess's plan. Neighboring countries all sent secret letters wanting confirmation about the White Witch and also wanting to meet Finey to support her. However, Izetta says that she can only use magic in lands that contain magical energy. Right now they received news that Germania's army was crossing the mountain range and that the other side of the mountain range contained no magical energy. Eilstadt's soldiers were ordered to retreat back to lure the enemy. This time, the princess asked the royal guards to act as Izetta's stand-in to perform a play. But Izetta did not want everyone to be in danger because of her, so she herself performed her role in this play. Eilstadt's plane took off, pulling the witch doll into the air, then dropped the doll at the location where Izetta was hiding. Izetta stood up and spoke loudly into the speaker. She spoke with a sharp voice, forcing the Imperial Army to surrender. They pointed their guns at her. She waved her hand, causing their guns to fly away. At the same time, coordinate with the sniper team to destroy their guns so they understand that the witch is angry. Izetta then blew up the cliff to crush the enemy soldiers. This made the Germania soldiers even more confident that Eilstadt was under the witch's protection. Once again, the Imperial army was defeated. Early in the morning, Izetta went to the garden to pull weeds and water the plants, so the maids looked everywhere for her. The princess, who knew about it, also found her actions very funny. She did not expect Izetta to be fierce and brutal on the battlefield, but she was very shy and gentle when she took off her uniform. Finey knows that this time of rest during the war is indeed short, but today she will take advantage of being by Izetta's side like a normal friend, not a princess of Eilstadt. Hearing that, Professor Elvira was present to join them. It turns out they want Izetta to try on an evening gown, but the maid couldn't tighten Izetta's waist because her breasts were too big. To avoid Finey feeling inferior about herself, Elvira temporarily took a scarf to make a dress for Izetta, then asked Bianca to play the role of the man teaching Izetta how to dance. In the end, the dance lesson ended smoothly, but Bianca's foot was stepped on many times by Izetta. The princess invited Bianca to have tea with them, but there was no cake. These days, the country is at war, so it's difficult to find cake shops. Maid Lot said that an old bakery had reopened because the princess distributed sugar and food relief on the occasion of her coronation. Hearing that, Finey craved the familiar taste of cake, and Elvira didn't stay to party with everyone but went to find Muller. But she encountered a mafia guy sent by Muller on a mission. Unexpectedly, he hired the Mafia instead of using royal soldiers. He explains that he wants to act in his own way to protect the princess and this country. Meanwhile, Rickert, Belkman's disciple, led the witch hunter on a tour of the Empire's weapons factory. Show him a secret weapon that Colonel Belkman has been researching for a long time. It was a more modern plane than the ones the king owned. Returning to the princess and the witch, they disguised themselves and secretly went to the capital's famous bakery to enjoy cakes. It's certainly not a waste of time to queue. But wait, suddenly the bakery owner whispered his thanks to the princess. It turned out that the bakery owner noticed the princess's way of eating and that her mouth watered when she ate the cake. The princess did not want to admit this shame and accidentally dropped the cake, and the headscarf also fell off. Izetta caught the cake, but the princess's identity was revealed. People did not cause a commotion but gathered in large numbers to look at them. When they returned, Muller scolded them and asked them not to do it again. He then said that he would go to Britannian to negotiate with the Allies about repelling the Germanian Empire. Suddenly, the phone rang. Muller received urgent news that there was an insider in the team, so he changed his mind and let Finey and Izetta go to Britannian while he stayed to handle the case. The meeting of countries threatened by Germania took place quite enthusiastically. They all talked about their weapons carrier, showing that the Empire's intentions were still very clear, and that they were not afraid of Eilstadt's witch. By the way, when it comes to witches, no one believes that such a thing exists in modern times. Lord Redford of Britannian wishes to introduce to all the representatives of the nations here two exceptional figures. The door opened. Finey solemnly walked in and the way Izetta appeared impressed the representatives. Although people believed in magic, they still did not feel secure when she was alone. It was still very difficult to fight against a huge and powerful empire of modern scientific weapons. Therefore, to show Eilstadt's sincerity and desire to receive support from neighboring countries, Izetta will take on the task of destroying Germania's aircraft carrier. This is an extremely important task. Lord Redford sends an Air Force Lieutenant, Colonel Groman, to help the witch as if to repay the debt that caused the princess to be captured last time. That night, the princess was quite worried that the ship would pass through a place with weak magical energy. But Izetta was silent and did not respond. 
it turned out that she was embarrassed to sleep in the same room as the princess. Meanwhile, on that aircraft carrier, the witch hunting team was also present. They carelessly played cards with each other without the slightest hesitation, or whether they had any other plans. Bazetta was accompanied by two fighter jets and four missiles. They flew high in the clouds, and everyone chatted happily with the witch. They located the enemy aircraft carrier, Izetta, riding the rifle and carrying four rockets. She crossed the canyons to reach the carrier. However, Lieutenant Groman said that four rockets need to be activated at the same time from the bottom of the ship to sink it. This is even more difficult when it has moved out to sea. However, the Imperial Army already knew her plan, so they just waited for her to appear before setting a trap to capture her. She weaved through the hail of bullets, but a rocket was shot and exploded. The witch hunters also began to attack. The captain flies the most modern fighter to pursue Izetta. He wanted revenge for the previous encounter at the Eilstadt border, so he gave chase, forcing Izetta to drop the remaining two rockets into the water and keep them from exploding. Witnessing a girl being fiercely chased, Lieutenant Groman could no longer hold back and lowered his altitude to cover Izetta. Izetta still tried to dodge but entered a low magical energy area, so she had to land in the water. Then she rose and carefully calculated her flight path in the magical area. Avoiding forever is not a good way. Izetta placed a rocket in the fighter jet's elevator position. With only one last rocket left, she had to get close to the target to attack the fuel chamber. Lieutenant Groman was there in time to support Izetta helping her successfully launch rockets to destroy the Empire's aircraft carrier. The captain intended to chase, but Colonel Belkman ordered a retreat because his goal had already been achieved. He vaguely saw the witch's weakness. Sacrificing an old aircraft carrier would not affect the fighting power of the mighty Germania Empire. However, there was still one thing he wanted to confirm, which was the legend that the legendary White Witch still slept deep in the basement of the old castle in Eilstadt. Rickert was immediately asked to take on this task. The colonel wondered if there were any secrets buried deep in that castle. After sinking the Imperial aircraft carrier, Izetta also fell ill. She had lost so much strength. Lord Redford also brought many beautiful dresses in the hope that the princess and witch will appear splendidly at tomorrow's celebration party. Meanwhile, Rickard parachuted into Eilstadt territory, but strong winds caused him to land quite far from Eilstadt Castle. The next day, when Rickard asked for directions, a fruit seller enthusiastically showed him the way and also gave him a green apple. On the way, Rickard felt a bit guilty because he was the enemy of the people here. Accidentally, a car passed by, and he caught the apple, causing him to fall into the small stream below. At this moment, Bianca was taking Lot to visit her house when she saw Rickard was soaking wet, so she helped him. Rickard pretended that he was an international student on his way back home successfully deceiving two girls. He stayed at a boarding house belonging to Bianca's sister. Due to the recent war, he was the only customer here. Rickard always has a book about the White Witch in his hand. In the past, the White Witch once saved the prince's life, and they developed feelings for each other, but she did not want to go to the capital to become queen. Then, when the country of Eilstadt was invaded and the prince was in trouble, the White Witch appeared to save this country. Rickard read the story so passionately that he fell asleep until he was called up for dinner. While eating, he chats with Bianca about the legend of the White Witch. Bianca says that the story ends happily between the prince and the White Witch, but Rickard wanted to ask her about a different ending to that story, which made Bianca angry. Lot saw that and said that if he distorted this country's legendary story, he would be punished. Rickard returned to his room to think for a while, and then planned to meet Bianca to apologize. But he didn't know how to explain, so he was still standing in front of her room. Suddenly, he heard her screaming, so he rushed into the room. But in front of him was the sight of Lot bathing Bianca, which made him blush. After that incident, Bianca was always teased by her juniors. But the duty of guarding the castle cannot be neglected at all. The insider appeared near the castle. Rickard found him but did not get any useful information about the White Witch. They planned to break into the castle's basement tomorrow. Meanwhile, back in Britannia there was a celebration. But more than that, they wanted to see the leader of Eilstadt and the White Witch. The appearance of two girls attracted everyone's attention. The men all wanted to invite them to a dance, but the two girls went out and danced together. Suddenly, Colonel Belkman and a white-haired girl appeared. Izetta saw that the girl was very familiar and very dangerous. Just after saying a few tentative words between the two sides, the girl rushed forward to kiss the white witch and bit her until she bled. Then she suddenly fainted. Colonel Belkman quickly took the girl away. While the two girls did not understand what was going on, Lord Redford told the two girls to go inside. He said that neighboring countries had agreed to support Fiennes Eilstadt. This good news made both girls forget what had just happened. 
But strangely, the representatives all had sinister smiles on their faces. At this time, the spy and Rickert climbed under the carriage to sneak into the castle. They broke into the castle's basement using a map they found in the old church. Rickert used some special blood to open the door that had been sealed by magic. They then found the White Witch's magic map. After they used the camera to take a photo of the map, a red stone fell down. Rickert had just picked it up when the royal guards arrived. Bianca chases after them and has her juniors blockade the escape route. She chased after the blood when she saw Rickert. Rickert apologizes to Bianca for the tragic end of the White Witch he told her about. When the White Witch met the prince again, the prince had a wife and children. When the prince died on the battlefield, the White Witch saved the nation of Eilstadt, but she was betrayed by them. The story that ended tragically did not end happily, like the legendary story in Eilstadt. They both opened fire. Bianca shot Rickard in the heart, causing him to fall out of the castle. The guards also shot down the spy, but the camera and red stone were picked up by a man. But the next day, Izetta continuously helped allied countries fight against the Empire's invasion to increase friendship. This makes Izetta loved by many people. The princess and Elvira give Izetta evocative compliments that make her shy, contrary to her heroic appearance on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Bianca went to report to Muller about everything and intended to ask about the legendary story of the White Witch, but she hesitated. She thought the enemy had been killed, so she didn't want to investigate further. At this time, the Empire had already transported a lot of weapons to the area adjacent to the fortress. The princess discussed this with everyone and assigned Izetta the task of coordinating with the army to fight the enemy. That night, Fini meets with Izetta to inform her of the importance of tomorrow's battle. If they win and the Allies bring troops to support them, perhaps the Empire will temporarily cease hostilities. Peace will also be temporarily established. Although Fini has not yet fulfilled her promise to Izetta that she would bring peace to the world, but this is also an important step in that journey. The next morning, Izetta was at the fortress with a new weapon crafted just for her. However, the general received news that the enemy was attacking somewhere else, and that this place was just a decoy. Izetta then immediately boarded a plane to the fighting area. There is abundant magical energy in that place, so she can fly on her own. When Izetta arrived at the battlefield, before she could do anything, she was stopped by the white-haired girl from before. She introduced herself as Sophie, once known as the White Witch. A few months ago, the king entrusted full authority to Colonel Belkman. He went to the king's secret research center to learn about what he desired. Here, he saw a clone of the White Witch. She was created based on DNA samples obtained at the White Witch's burial site. However, they only created a body without a soul but she did react to the blood samples Germania collected after massacring the witch village. After Sophie drank Izetta's blood, she changed. Now she is the strongest weapon in the army of the Germania Empire. Sophie advises Izetta to stop because witches cannot interfere with people's destiny. But Izetta says she did this for Princess Fini, making Sophie angry. She showed a vicious expression, attacked Izetta, and ran away. Izetta chases after her because she must win this battle. Then her magic power gradually lost its power, causing her to fall down. The chains wrapped around Izetta's body and hung her up. Sophie looked at the country of Eilstadt with hatred and said that she would destroy all the descendants of the traitors. The Imperial Army then attacked the capital of Eilstadt. In less than two hours, the capital fell and was filled with fire and destruction. Enemy troops rushed into the mansion to capture the princess, but the royal guards took everyone in the castle to hide in a secret tunnel. At this time, Fini is very worried about Izetta and feels sorry for all the people for not being able to protect them. However, if the leader's life is still alive, there is still a chance to gain independence. Meanwhile, Eilstadt's strongest fortress was attacked by Sophie and her army, and she blew up a mountain so that tanks could pour into the capital. Izetta is about to be taken away, there is only one chance to save her. Eilstadt's group of suicide planes rushed in to cause chaos, and the Royal Guard provided cover fire for hands to save Izetta. Many soldiers volunteered to sacrifice themselves to hold back the enemy so hands could take Izetta away. Because Izetta is this country's hope. The news that the capital of Eilstadt had been captured reached the ears of Lord Redford and politicians from other countries. The Germania Empire is already very strong and now has a witch stronger than the witch of Eilstadt to help. They will soon rule the world. Germania took this opportunity to promote the witch Sophie's power and disparage Eilstadt's childish power. Belkman regrets that Izetta and Princess Fini escaped. However, he was still promoted by the king and was also kicked out of the campaign from now on. The king himself will order the witches and command the army. Belkman was surprised but could not disobey orders. Meanwhile, Izetta dreamily remembered her grandmother's words. She said that the White Witch was a traitor to her own tribe. 
She stole the first witch's magic stone to intervene in the fate of humanity. She used that stone to absorb more magic power, allowing humans to quickly win the battle. Izetta woke up to find the princess next to her. Izetta's whole body ached, and she didn't understand why she was here. By the time she remembered the battle, the capital had been occupied for nearly a month. Now a secret base in the mountains is where the survivors gather. Izetta repeatedly admitted her mistakes and told everyone about what Sophie had said. Now that everyone knows Germania has resurrected the White Witch, Muller and Finey admit their ancestors' mistakes. That was the tragic ending of the White Witch, not a happy ending like in the legend. Right now, the whole world is terrified of Sophie. The magic power in the ground is gradually depleting, which is because Sophie is using the magic stone to absorb it, turning it into an energy source that the Empire calls Exenium. It is loaded with Germania's most advanced weapons and becomes a bomb with tremendous destructive power. It was because the magical power of the land was drained by Sophie that Izetta was defeated by Sophie. Muller also admitted one thing. His own family was also involved in betraying the White Witch. He accidentally picked up a notebook that recorded his ancestors' words of repentance and how to defeat the White Witch. Meanwhile, Sophie's body is adversely affected by the magic stone's power. But the Empire also created thousands of copies of her so she could transfer her consciousness and power to her new body. But she didn't want to. However, she needed the witch's blood to continue living, so she was forced to obey the king. Izetta's injuries were so severe that her legs could not recover immediately. Furthermore, she doesn't have any magic power here, so the doctor can't do anything else. Finey was heartbroken, and everyone advised her to become a refugee to become a government in exile. Finey feels useless because she cannot preserve the independence and freedom of the country. Muller then walked in and gave Izetta the remaining half of the magic stone. He said this is the only way available at the moment. In the past, when the White Witch brought peace to Eilstadt, the Queen immediately ordered the witch to be killed, even though she was the country's savior. As soon as she let her guard down in a land without magic, a soldier took her staff, causing the magic stone to break in half. Then they tortured her to death. That's why Sophie hates Eilstadt. Now how will Izetta decide because they don't have much time left? The Imperial Army searched the castle to find the location of the royal secret base. Valkman was also there, he visited Rickert's grave and promised to avenge him. When the princess was absent-minded and did not care about eating or drinking, the Imperial Army attacked here. Eilstadt's soldiers could not resist. Valkman says he wants to go inside to verify the captive is the real princess, but this may be his only way to survive at this point. The leader brought the surviving soldiers to threaten Fine into surrendering. The princess could not stand this barbarism, so she appeared. She wanted them to spare the lives of the survivors here. But she was wrong. Once they caught her, they immediately ordered everyone here to be killed. Suddenly, Izetta appeared in a color quite similar to Sophie. Bianca knew full well what she was doing. Muller said that the magic stone would drain the witch's blood and lifespan. But Izetta still wants to end everything. It's all for the princess's dream and also for the people of Eilstadt. Belkman ran to the end of the road and pointed his gun at the general. He knew the king had ordered the general to kill him, so he knew this was his chance to survive. He shot the general and surrendered. He then talked about what would happen to the witch's body when using magic stones. He also volunteered to tell everyone he knew. Muller interrogates Belkman. They are all people operating in the dark. Belkman said Germania successfully built missiles to destroy Eilstadt. As an example, forcing other countries to surrender under unreasonable conditions. Belkman said that he just wanted to survive because the king wanted to kill him, so he decided to betray the king. Muller then reported the situation to the princess. At this point, she no longer had the will to fight. She wanted to surrender to Germania and give up everything. Izetta slapped the princess's face to wake her up. She reminds her of the sacrifices of the soldiers and people of Eilstadt. Remind her of the promise between them. As expected, this was an effective way to help the princess regain consciousness. Next, Belkman tells them about Germania's plan to drop the atomic bomb. If they can stop Sophie, the bombing plan will be postponed or cancelled because she is the one controlling them. Now, to prevent neighboring countries from surrendering, Finey must go to the conference held in Germania. For this, she needed Belkman's cooperation so she could easily break inside. Belkman is now unlikely to return to Germania, but he will still take a risk. The next day, Bianca, Muller, Finey, and Belkman go to Germania, while Izetta takes care of stopping Sophie. Sophie has prepared the weapons to destroy Eilstadt, and Izetta is facing her. At this time, Belkman was discovered by the Witch Hunter squad leader. Izetta created a sword shield to block Sophie's rain of bullets. Muller's group successfully entered the Imperial capital, but Belkman took advantage of the chaos and fled. 
The conference between countries has begun. Two witches are fighting in the sky near the rocket launch site. But Izetta still couldn't reach that location. She remembered Belkman's words that Sophie was the one controlling those missiles, so she would lure Sophie somewhere else. But the most unexpected thing is that the Empire has completed another copy of Sophie. At this time, the destructive power of the bomb was shown at the conference to intimidate the representatives. In just a moment, it will be launched to obliterate Eilstadt. Outside, Finney is still trying to get inside, but the guards are too strict. Muller appeared to lure them so that Finney and Bianca could sneak inside. He ran to an alley and was shot by a young soldier. Belkman couldn't escape either. The captain's name refers to Rickert, who gave him a dream fighter. Rickert trusted Belkman a lot, but now Belkman betrayed that trust, causing him to sacrifice his life. The captain does not allow Belkman to continue to exist. The princess and Bianca successfully sneaked into the conference. Germania's representative kicked her out. However, the other representatives want her to attend the conference because it concerns the survival of Eilstadt and the world. At the same time, the two witches were still fighting inconclusively. This time, Izetta revealed her true ending that year. The queen did not betray her, but the prince did. Before dying, the prince told his wife to kill Sophie so that Eilstadt would not be crushed by other countries for using evil magic. Sophie became even more angry and mad because she trusted the prince too much. She will destroy Eilstadt so that his descendants will never be reborn. Izetta had predicted this, so she told the princess that the source of magic power underground was like the flow of rivers. If Sophie drains them and she can defeat Sophie, then this world will no longer have magic. She kneeled down and begged the princess to let her fight as the last witch of Eilstadt and put an end to magic in this world. Finey said this out loud at the conference seriously, and tears fell down her face. This caused the representatives to discuss their decision. Two witches are draining all magical energy from the earth. The two energy balls collided, causing a giant column of light to shoot into the air. Emperor Germania laughed like crazy and crushed the wine glass in his hand. Then other countries agreed to join forces to attack Germania. The king of Germania committed suicide, and World War II ended. The images of the witch Izetta are only in the past. A few years later, Finey often went to the small house in the forest to visit a friend who was sitting in a wheelchair. It's also a story with a happy ending for the last witch.